Hey everybody, welcome back to the Wobbly Camera. I wanted to share with you uh, my latest I've been playing and I'm thinking about maybe getting and doing a playthrough for you. I didn't want to flip it upside down, but um, getting getting the long road to the table. This is the latest from Flying Pig Games and Mark Walker. It is a World War III with a paranormal twist. Yes, there are werewolves, vampires, and I told my buddy that and he was like, I, but you don't have to play with that. I think it is, it's an interesting element, it's an option. I think it's great, they got them. So just to get that elephant out of the room. What I'm doing here though, is I was playing from the Long Road Tactics book. So there's actually a, a book that comes in here that is just strictly World War III. No paranormal at all. So just straight up hardware on hardware. And, you know, if that's what you prefer. Now, the system itself, I still really like. I have always enjoyed kind of that the Platoon Commander series with like Kursk. I know, I, I've read a couple people that said they just weren't, eh. You know, that's every game, right? You're going to have people who like something that don't like something. But I like this one, and I thought I would share why. Now, what I like about this new iteration of the rules is they have helicopters, you know, some close air supports. There's like A-10s, there's a the Frogfoot, there's Hinds, there's Cobras. I wish instead of a Cobra you had Apaches, but uh, maybe Apaches will come later. I just like them. I prefer those to the Cobra, uh, anyhow. But with the Abrams, what, what I have here, it doesn't really specify, I don't think if it's the, like, I think it's probably the M1 model. I don't know if it really said the M1A1, or the, I don't, I know it's not an A2, so it's probably just an A1. And But you do have Bradleys. For me, this has what I would consider my preference for American vehicles on here because you can get Bradleys. I've played early Cold War, so this does have like some M60A3 tanks and you have your 113s. It's just that for me, I prefer maybe a few years later into the Cold War because I like the Abrams tanks. And then, over, excuse me, with the Soviet side, you've got T80s, there's some, I think, T72s, T64s. So you have kind of a wide selection of armor there as well. Infantry are pretty equal, so you're going to have to use, you know, soften up an infantry unit before you, you know, assault with your own infantry. But you do get like some mortars and uh, missile weapons. So this has the trappings of a little bit more modern. Also then, with that, there are some, some things to keep in mind. Um, like the Abrams, for example. Here, if I can zoom in on that. The Abrams tanks have advanced targeting. So they have this A, which reduces some of the penalties for certain uh, shooting instances, like long range. Instead of having a two column shift penalty for long range, you get like a one. And then it uh, helps with, like if you shoot on the move, I, th I think mostly at long range. Also, then there's like advanced targeting. So uh, if there's smoke, but then there's like, um, what do they call it? Like an, an infrared smoke, inf in like infra infrared spectral smoke or some of the spectral smoke. So yeah, this brings in some modern day stuff to the game, all without adding too much more crunch. I mean, obviously I got to try to remember some of that as I play, but it's not overloading you with a lot of new stuff. A lot of the concepts that the game currently has are still here. It's just pretty cool to see it you know, in action in a modern environment. And I love the pieces. And these are nice, heavy, thick pieces. So I was putting them down. It was like, I mean, they just have this nice sound when they hit the table. So component-wise, I'm happy. The maps are great. I... I got two maps laid out here on the table. I think the artwork is almost exactly the same style of artwork that the Kursk has. And you could probably mix and match your maps and make your own custom. Uh, you know, obviously some towns might not line up and make sense if you're putting city names because, you know, this is primarily Germany and then you've got, you know, over there Kursk, so they're Russian names. But the 
if you ignore the city names and the but if you mix and match the terrain you have quite a few maps you could play with combat so just to go over a couple things that i still think are really good um, i've played nations at war that was another mark walker design and then that was in his world at war so he's done a lot of uh, land-based and then kind of world war ii themed games with like the world at war it's under new ownership now and it's a a lot of changes and and uh, things have come to the game but like originally from what i used to to play there were a lot of numbers on the counters the counters still on that have a lot of numbers and what was interesting is you know there were folks who said well there's just too much information on your counter because to shoot had three numbers there's like you know the 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 hit number the range and um like the firepower but i just I can't remember it off the top of my head, but then you had that for like the AP value, H, HE value, and then you had like your defense was, was a couple of numbers. So it was just like, there's a lot of information on the counters. Here, we still have quite a bit of information on the counters, so you don't need like separate data cards. But one thing that's helped to condense that a little bit is these color blocks. So the red background, yellow background, that all has meaning on the combat chart so this will tell you the range and then based on the range if it's short range normal range or long range there will be some modifiers to what column you ultimately roll on so that complexity is still there but not as many numbers on the counter which is you know i'm okay with it's fine makes it easier to read i guess if you have a big enough counter you can put all the numbers you want and then um just trying to remember there's some other icons on here like uh, if there's a little missile that's a missile unit and then my memory is poor so I already forgot what the yellow border around your I think this is means that the yellow border means you can oh it's right here yeah it can count as AP against armor vehicles or high explosive against because the basic M113 has like that 50 caliber browning so you could use that against lightly armored vehicles like other APCs or you could use it as the um, high explosive factor against like infantry and then there was uh, this rifle over the movement means that that's a can carry troops um, let's see trying to or it was either that or the troops can fire from it yeah oh it carries a recon combatant uh, I'm trying to think, looking here to see if there was some other new iconography that kind of goes on. The missile one, like you know, it's a missile unit, so subject to running low on missiles when shooting. So, like I said, there's a few more concepts in here that just kind of make sense. Uh, but the combat is still, I still like the combat. So, if we're taking a look here at the tanks, now what's interesting is in this scenario, like a lot of them, there's a lot more Soviets than there are. You know, the allied units, if you will, Americans. And, but the, this, this is the part that is always fun to talk about with other people is how it, how much more advanced were Americans and allies over the Soviet counterparts. I've always grown up with the impression that the American stuff was virtually and vulnerable could never be destroyed kind of a feeling and that the Soviet stuff was that quantity was a quality of its own because it wasn't as well engineered or strong or deadly as you know the Allied counterparts so less technology and so they could blow up in large numbers how true is that really because again if you look at say like Desert Storm it kind of feels that way uh, but then people would say well those were antiquated tanks they weren't with well-trained russian troops and so it's it's hard to say if we'll ever know for sure how good american like allied versus you know axis if you want to call it that uh, equipment would be or war nato versus warsaw pact but here this game still has that feeling of even though you're outnumbered, your technology and the tanks especially will help give you that advantage. And that's modeled here by looking at the Abrams and a T-80, for example. So with the Abrams, 
we do have a firepower 14. They also have a little minus one subscript number that might be a little hard to see. That means when I'm rolling a die 10 for combat effects, I get to subtract one from the roll. So that, that's pretty good because you want that. You want a low roll. Then the T-80 has a 12 firepower. Um, you can also see the different colors and backgrounds. So the Abrams can shoot a little bit further, has advanced targeting to offset some penalties for shooting, like long range shooting, for example. And the T-80 does not have that advanced optics. Uh, they can both fire on the move, but the Abrams does a better job at it because the yellow explosion I thought they had that on here as a reminder. Yeah, orange, I should say. Orange is a minus one column shift and blue is a minus two. So the Abrams can even shoot better on the move. Now their up close combat is similar because they both each have standard machine guns they could use for you know assaulting infantry and whatnot. Uh, then they both have the same armor, but the Abrams has a plus one. So again, when like the T-80 is rolling combat, they add one to their die 10 result roll because uh, you know the Abrams has like that special really strong Chobum armor so to give that um, you know reflect that there's a little plus one subscript there so they're a little harder to crack so the Abrams here is really built strong and it plays out on the table like that because when you look at the ranges the ranges are almost almost doubled over the T-80. So the T-80 being orange has a short range of two hexes, normal range out to five, long range out to 10. Whereas the red for the Abrams, it's short range is four, that's double. Normal is eight, not quite double. And then long range is 16. Again, not quite double, but when you're playing on this space, being able to shoot out to 16 hexes is quite far like I can't show you 16 hexes here um, but 16 to 10 is quite a bit of difference the Americans and the Allies have that luxury to sit back and snipe and take long-range shots over the Russians who again this is kind of the feeling I get and how I grew up understanding it is the Russians have to charge and get up there to bring their weapons in close and this again is reflected here and then just shooting like for example if uh, if we're at say 10 10 hexes that's long range for both well the long range penalty is a minus two column shift to the left this lower number here is potentially less damage unless you have advanced optics then you only make one shift to the left so again that high technology favors the Abrams. And the way that combat works for armored vehicles is you take your firepower and you subtract the defense of the vehicle or whatever you're shooting. So 14 minus eight is a six. So I'm starting on this six column here. Now if we're at long range, I make one shift to the left. And now I'm rolling on the four firepower column. I then roll a die 10 Oh, that's a bad roll. But because I have that advanced targeting, I have ballistic computers and whatnot, I subtract one, so that makes my roll a seven. So if I go seven and cross-reference onto my chart, that gives me one potential hit. Without that modifier, I would have had no effect. The eight is a miss. So this is a perfect example of those little technological bonuses help. So then, the Soviet player would roll uh, a die to defend. They have a morale of three, which is the base for the game. And if they roll a three or under, they negate, negate that hit entirely. So there's a chance they could negate it. And I rolled a three, so they negate it. Um, also, though, there are your terrain effects that come into play. So I don't want to forget that. So if you're in buildings and forests and things like that, that could also modify combat with column shifts. So we'll just pretend these are just... Two, two tanks shooting across the field. Now, that even with a poor roll, there was still the chance I could have damaged that T-80. So the T-80 in return, being the less superior, I take 12 minus eight. So I know I'm already on the four column, so I'm starting off less than my, my counterpart. Then 
because I don't have advanced targeting and it's long range, I have to make two column shifts. One, two. Now I'm rolling on the zero column. I roll my die 10, which in this case I rolled a six. However, uh, the Abrams, because it's got that stronger armor, it adds one to that, so that becomes a seven, which is okay because that's still on the six to seven column, but it's no effect. So just that little bit of difference, potentially I could have scored a hit on the Soviet. He rolled a good morale check, but there was no, I'd have to roll much lower because uh, on, the, on the zero column that the Soviet player has to even get that one potential hit. So this game really does play out in that fashion that I grew up understanding is that the Allies just had this incredible amount of technology to help offset the overwhelming numbers of the Soviet horde. And that's fun. Let me tell you, it's fun because you can still overwhelm American units. The other stuff might not be as strong as the Abrams. And so if you lose a lot of your support and you can still capture your objectives. And that's the thing that also seems to play out in, you know, when you, when you maybe play other similar games that have that effect of, the horde sure i might not be able to stop all of them but then that's where that quantity becomes a quality i can still take objectives i could still win i could still flank you i could still get units on either side of you and get flanking bonuses and 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 things like that i could still capture city hexes and get victory points and take care of all your weaker stuff even though you still have some abrams tanks if there's nothing there to support the abrams then you know big deal so overall, I still really like this game. I really like the modern iteration of it, and it's still fun to play with lots of armor. But there's still, like I said, helicopters, close air support. You still got your infantry. You still have missile units. Um, you still have advanced targeting rules, spectral smoke. Uh, you know, it's just, it's great. And it's not overly complicated in page count. And again, if you don't want to play the game with the paranormal element, you don't have to. But they do have a huge campaign where if that's of interest to you, it still walks you through the game kind of uh, small. And it slowly adds on the rules that you would need to play, eventually adding in the paranormal element. So none of it has to be used all at once. Just play what you enjoy. And I think, I think this is a game that you will enjoy. I have... And uh, yeah, just let me know your thoughts and I will talk to you later. Thanks a lot for watching and enjoy the rest of your, your work week or weekend or whatever it is you're doing. Talk to you later. Bye.